Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. On this series, we often get a sneak peek into technology and innovation. And on this episode, we're going to head to Chimo Farms near Mount Bridges, Ontario, where Larry Cowan, Dale Cowan, and Hannah Brooksbank are testing a new product called Invita, a naturally occurring bacteria that has the potential to help corn plants fix nitrogen. Here's Agris agronomist Dale Cowan on what that could mean for growers. So Dale, tell us about Invita. What exactly is it? Well, Invita is, is a biological, and I guess, first of all, just to back up a little bit, Invita has come out uh, come to us from uh, Growmark out of the U.S. out of their Ag Validity Program, which is a program that uh, looks at new and novel products, and they uh, put out a few small trials to try it out for first year, and once successful, they bring it out to the whole co-op system. So that's where we are today, introducing it in a my field testing scenario. So being a biological, um, the promise is it's going to help plants fix some nitrogen, and uh, Ever since I graduated from university, I've always heard that someday plants will fix their own nitrogen. So we seem to be sneaking up on that uh, on that promise. So Dale, how does it work? I mean, when do you apply it? What exactly does it do to the plant to help it fix nitrogen? Well, we think in terms of uh, soybean inoculant, where we put it in with a seed and it, it uh, works on uh, creating a nodule on the root. So Invita is a little bit different, is that once it's either applied directly on the seed in a pop-up fertilizer, or applied foliar at V2 to V6 corn, what it does, it colonizes uh, the entire plant. So every single cell in the plant gets colonized with the bacteria. And then it has the ability then, that every cell has the ability to take some of the atmospheric nitrogen and fix it in a form the plant can use. What does it do for farmers when it comes to you know nitrogen efficiency, Dale? What does it mean for a grower to be able to maybe use a little less nitrogen? Well, and that's, that's something that we're trying to determine this year. So um, our project is set up just to determine some of that. But the idea is that uh, if we can come up with a nominal rate of nitrogen, because every year we're always wrestling, well, what's the rate, rate of nitrogen? What's my yield going to be? What's the rainfall going to be? So we're always playing this guessing game with, did I put on enough N? So if we can work on a, on a base rate of nitrogen, and if Invita can then colonize the plant and pick up that slack and buffer the N supply later in the season. So if you get that extended grain fill period that needs more nitrogen, rather than worrying about being short of nitrogen, can Invita carry that load and fix the nitrogen that plant needs? Because it's going to live in the plant until the plant dies. So it's going to fix nitrogen every single day that plant's alive. We're now catching up with Hannah Brooksbank. Hannah, I see a drone over here. Tell us what you're up to this summer with this project. How'd you get involved? Well, I recently just graduated from the University of Guelph. And so I started on with Agris with this Invita project. And we're using the drone to go over all of our research plots. Yeah. So tell me about this field here and the plots. Obviously in this field and other fields, how, much, how many plots are you going to fly? What type of data are you going to collect? So we have kind of two categories of trials and plots. Um, one is called our nitrogen rate trial. So we're looking at probably 15 different plots with variable nitrogen rates and we're looking at how Invita performs under different rates. And then we also have probably a few dozen side-by-side um, -side trials which are just a grower's regular nitrogen program plus the Invita and we're going to compare that to see how that works for different growers and what their conditions are. Tell us about what you're going to see on the drone. Um, are you going to see some uh, you know, differences in growth and color? How, what are you going to learn from the drone? So we're using the drone to go over the fields to kind of see the vigor. And if we have weak spots in the field, if we have topography or ditches or things that may affect our trial. Um, but we're also using it to see if we see a difference in our plots. Now our plots are strips. So hopefully when we take the drone up, we'll be able to see that this strip that didn't have Invita applied maybe looks a bit worse or is a little bit behind in growth or with the Invita. Maybe there's no difference, but that's kind of what we have the drone for, is to see if it has a difference with the growth itself. Yeah. Now when you wrap it up in the fall and you put all the data together, what type of information are you going to provide Dale and his team to sort of to assess? So in the fall we're kind of going to put together a portfolio of all of these projects and all of these different trials on all the farms and our main goal is to see if there's a return on investment but we're also seeing how Invita performs under those different rates. Did it work better at this pH, this nitrogen rate, um, in this soil type? So we're going to compile all of that, analyze all the data 
and go through it and see at the end of it at the end of the day um, how does it work so Dale just talked to Hannah about you know this trial the drone and you know what she's measuring tell us about what you want to see what you need to see from the results what is going to make this work for farmers well, I think there's a couple things here. We every year we wrestle with the right rate of nitrogen, right? So we're looking at, uh, you know, it's a complex situation. This nitrogen availability we always wrestle with every year, but really it comes down to, to two very simple components in the equation. Do I have an end supply problem or an end demand problem? And if if our trial work shows us what the right rate of nitrogen was and what impact and Vita had on each rate of those ni uh, nitrogen rate, then we have a little more confidence in saying to a farmer that this is your base rate of nitrogen and apply in Vita and it'll be there to pick up that demand for nitrogen later in the season if conditions are conducive to an extended grain fill period. So that's what I'm hoping we see out of it. That's why we're doing the trial work to find that out. If you get the results you're looking for and this sort of takes root um, with farmers, what might this product be in five or ten years from now? Well, I think if, if things work out as, as we anticipate or, or if they work out at all, it's, it's the, this will become part of a nitrogen management program for corn farmers that we can worry a little less about getting exactly the right amount of nitrogen on, knowing that the plant is now has the ability to fix whatever nitrogen it needs at any time in the growing season right up to the very end. We know that 40% of the nitrogen is taken up after tassel stage. That's kind of at the end of the nitrogen supply in the soil or in the applied nitrogen. So if we get that uh, confidence in the ability to, to buffer that end supplies, I think it'll be a, uh, it'll be a, it can be a game changer if that's how it works out. Not to mention uh, environmental pressures coming from reducing greenhouse gas, which is directly related to nitrogen rate application. So we have the number of things that uh, we really want to keep a close eye on. Well, a fascinating story, Dale. We will be watching, sir. Always great to have you on Corn School. Always great to be here.